Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Alright, welcome to another video. So this is going to be pretty fun. We're going to walk a short distance um, and we're going to head over to Quan Chang's booth at Comic Con. This was shot in 2019, so last summer. And uh, we're going to look at Joe Matarera, Stephen Platt, and Olivier Coipel. And we actually even bump in to some YouTube friends. <laughs> so, alright, let's see if this works. I've been having trouble recording and... and um, playing the video but we're going to go into full screen mode in just a sec so this is um kim jung ji's uh booth tarada draws here kim jung ji and also carl kapinski and this is actually very very close to where my table is in artist alley i can pretty much sit and watch them uh, work usually there's a pretty big crowd but but um i think only carl is here but let's go hopefully everyone's doing well today yeah, so this is Carl Kapinski right here sketching, and he's sketching this piece up here on the um, screen. You can see it. I think I stopped for a second. Beautiful piece. Looks like it's done in Copics or maybe like watercolors. Very, very nice. Right, let's go on the full screen. Mode. I recorded a minute or two of Kim Jong Ji drawing, but I mean, honestly, there's better videos that people have recorded of him doing stuff. This is Stuart Ng's books. Really, really great stuff. You'll see a bunch of Frazetta prints over here. They have a lot of Frazetta stuff this year, but uh, all official products and very, very cool. So coming up right here, you can see Jim Steranko, and he is right next to Quan's booth. So... Um, we're going to head to Quan's booth and we're going to look at some original art, which is going to be very, very fun. Right, watch this. This is funny. I get told not to film Mr. Steranko. Watch. It's like, nope. Get the camera away from me. I'm like, sorry, sir. All right. So this is Koi Pal. This is Magic Order original art. And it is cool. A friend of mine, Jose Jag, he actually bought a piece. There's a, another video I have somewhere. I'm missing some of my videos. Um, but uh, this is a good one, and, and it's about 20 minutes or so of really, really kick-ass art. And Quan's very, very nice to me. He always lets me look through everything and film, and uh, there's some great stuff. So Dylan is right here. Dylan is a patron and also um, uh, on YouTube. So it's a Joe Matarera cover. And it's full size. You'll actually see that Joe generally draws small when he does his pencils. Look at that. That is... A full page he draws them sideways they're only in pencil and so that that page would be about five and a half or wait it would be 17 like eight eight point five by 11 dimensions so like almost the size of like bond paper but um i'm trying to get a better shot they they oh quan lets me come back look there's some travis originals right there it's a space girl original he hasn't, the stuff, oh, look at this. This is so awesome. This is a triple gatefold Matarera uh, Battle Chasers piece. It's very, very kick-ass. Look at that. Red Monica. Oh, man, it's so cool. Joe's great. Gully. Look at that glove. the lights from the room are making it look very magical it's tough it's really actually tough to shoot videos at comic-con because so much stuff is behind plastic or glass and there's so much reflective light but uh quan has those loose boards out so it makes it actually better when they're not in a portfolio to actually look at the original that's a really really great piece though but i figured this would be fun for people to see it's something that i've never shared and um you know, where are you going to see just footage like this? Only at Comic-Con. Look at that. I'm thinking that is Opeña. That looks like Lanil Yu. Yeah, that's Lanil Yu. That's a great piece. So Quan represents Lanil Yu, Jerome Opeña, Matarera. He sells a lot of Mignola, but he doesn't represent Mignola. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> There's Mignola right there. Told you. That's a Casada piece, it looked like. There's some more Joe Mad. Man, that's awesome. Sorry, I'm going fast because it's like there's pressure to get out of the way. They're trying to set up. So I do the best that I can. When we get to the portfolios, I can slow down a bit. He had some great Stephen Platt art. A really, really nice. Man, that piece is so good. You can always pause. Oh, that's Kevin Nolan. Oh, oh maybe it's. Is it Casada and Kevin Nolan? 
Yeah, it looked like it was both. Whoa, where am I going? I'm going out. There's Dylan right there. What's up, Dylan? All right. No. Oh, we're going to look. Okay, so these are Koipel. These are going to be covers, I think, or a lot of covers in here. Oh. <laughs> I muted the audio because there's so much ambient noise that it was it was it kind of would wreck the thing. Dylan's being complimentary about um, my uh, Patreon and stuff like that, and then he's bugging me about doing more Journey of a Thousand Miles videos and also Blaster Kid. So I appreciate people pushing me on that stuff though. keeps me It keeps me in check. All right, that is awesome. You can see uh, Olivier puts a lot of blue pencil down underneath his drawings. It's very, very difficult to pencil over and, and also to ink over. It can be very waxy. So, um, you know, but he's such a pro proficient artist that uh, it doesn't seem to affect him. But you can see how much of an underdrawing there is on those pieces. And, and he draws so well, it still looks cool, you know. Barry Windsor Smith used a lot of blue pencil on his work, and it's kind of the same thing. It almost gives it a little bit of a vibe look at that that is pretty neat and that i guess that is coipel it was funny it's uh, when he inks himself it's pretty heavy-handed but it, it's there's a lot of fine lines too so it's a nice mix but yeah it's not cool look at that boom And if you haven't checked out the other videos I uploaded yesterday, for sure do. I was actually surprised. The the views were very low on the one piece, or one uh, video. It's actually a good video. It's pretty fun, too. Oh, man, it's so nice. It almost looks like a... Oh, it is a two-page spread. I was going to say, it almost looks like a two-page spread. Gray Hulk. And on these, you can see that he used either wash or Copic. It's probably watered-down ink. Um, but either way, you're good to go. Man, Koipel is so good. I could look at his work all day, and especially when you get to see the originals. There's a lot to go through. He has a ton of Koipel, so I was hustling. That's really cool. Look at that. I would pause it, but I'm scared the video will... Um, have trouble restarting with the I have the OBS re recording this and I don't want to mess up the, the video completely so we're going to have to let it roll if you see something you really like obviously you can pause the video or even run it um, in slow slow mode so that you can peep stuff longer but these are just this should be a fun video for, for people into these artists The Magic Order original art is really good. I'm not sure how much I look through, if, if any. I have another video somewhere that, that was one of the ones I couldn't find of um, a lot of the Magic Order art. Man, that's great. Kuipel is a good example of someone that's very efficient with their technique versus detail versus productivity. I mean, honestly, if, if he was more driven just I think is a person to produce more art he could definitely do it but he likes to enjoy life and I don't think he likes to work all the time but he could easily do a monthly book I think it's just it, it it's he chooses not to but his style is is a perfect balance of of just enough detail and then just enough where you get to let your imagination sort of fill in the blanks to be able to pull it off the wash makes things faster too because you can put in a little bit of value without having to render everything you know i talk about this on patreon all the time but you know even saving an hour 90 minutes a day it really stacks up at the end of the month you may have saved 30 to 45 hours worth of time you know um just not cutting corners but but working smarter so quipel has been drawing professionally for many, many years now. Um, I would say he's probably been working professionally for 20, 23 years. That's a lot of drawings, you know, so he's very, he's very well versed in what he's putting down. Man, that is such a great piece. 
that would be expensive. I think I actually ask Quan right when I'm looking at like how much. I'd say that's at least ten grand. It could be twelve. It could even be eighteen. It probably sold too. They made the statue. His Batman statue is based on that. His Batman black and white statue. It's actually very cool. It was in that other video. Koypel definitely studied his Travis. <laughs> you can see so much uh, Travis. In oh, look, there it is right there. That wasn't a great photo of it. It's actually cooler when you see it. In, um, he picked a very, like, um, like it's kind of symmetrical uh, angle to shoot it at. It's from other angles. It's more dynamic. His bat's crazy. He really created, he did a creepy, creepy style bat. And those are nice little like little spot illustrations, you know. Sometimes I wish he would put in a little bit more detail in the background of some of these pieces. Some of his covers sometimes feel a little empty. This is early Koypel. Earlier, not earliest. His Legion stuff will be the earliest. Look at how much art he has here. Oh my god. Those portfolios are jam-packed with awesome. So what did I grab? What's this going to be? I don't even remember. Oh, okay. Oh, this is Battle Chasers. So this will be Tom McWeeny Arts over Joe Matarera. There could be some Jason Martin um, and maybe even a little bit of Tim Townsend. I think, in fact, there's a couple of pages that I actually worked on in here, too. That This one might actually be one of the pages that I did work on. There's one in particular that I remember. These look like, I'm pretty sure these are McWeeny inks. That could be Jason Martin, or it's towards the end of Tom's run. Yeah, this is a little further along. You can see that the way that he draws the main character is a bit different here. This is from issue four, I think. Great cover. That's, that's Tom's inks. Yeah, Tom and Joe made a really, really great combination. I think most people agree it's kind of their favorite pairing on the Battle Chasers run. That tree is so awesome. <laughs> Got a little Mobius sort of vibe going on with some of those characters. There was a lot of people that said that they had never been to a comic book convention. Oh, okay, so this is some of his amazing Spider-Man stuff. And again, you can see these pages are drawn smaller. And all in pencil. A lot of people don't prefer Joe's stuff um, shot from pencil. They want the inks. Um, and then for collectors, I would imagine getting smaller pages that are only in pencil would, would be a little bit of a bar. Man, that's such a great sequence. <clears throat> I worked on that page for sure. I remember that. Oh man, it's cool. You can see how fun Joe's pencils would be to ink. They're like they're tight, but but there's a little bit of you know, you could be creative with that. Definitely, you could play with line weights and really try to nail the details. I mean, I wouldn't go in and put a bunch of texture on his stuff, or at least not force in more. But um, yeah, he would be very very fun to ink. I could I, I could get down with that. Sorry for the the shadow on the thing. You have to understand there's huge floodlights above, so you, you really can't avoid it. This is a very iconic scene. Vince Russell. So this was from the, the preview book. Vince inked the um, original short story that led into Battle Chasers. It's in the um, collected editions. This double page spread is awesome. I was actually shocked that someone doesn't own this, that it's actually an art dealer's hand. So I'm guessing Joe must have just pulled these out. Because there's no way that this page has been sitting around for 20 years waiting to be sold. I don't I don't buy that. This is great, too. This is Jason Martin's inks. Yeah, I could see his name at the top. Jason's got kind of more of a heavy hand than Tom, and it's a little more, I don't know, like, like it looks a little more muddy to me. I'm not sure what he does different, That like if the lines are closer together. Tom's stuff, yeah, you know, I think that is part of it. Is Tom's lines are a little more spread out. Jason would pull them in tighter. So it felt dar darker. 
not just literally like that there was more shadow on it, but like the line weight felt heavier. Look at that. Man, that would be so fun to ink. God, give me that all day. Look at that. The bricks and stuff. It looks so fun. He's so good, man. Joe is such a great penciler. Look at that foot. But yeah, they're tiny. You know, he draws, he turns the page sideways and then draws, draws, like, sometimes, I think he got smart and knew why don't put two originals on one board, you know what I mean? Because then if you, to sell it, it would be kind of a pain in the ass. Look, I'm holding my camera with my pinky out. Do you see that? It's funny. <laughs> Always pinky out. Oh, and Joe's so great with silhouettes, too. I love, I love his, like, shadowed panels are always very, very cool. You see, he uses that a lot. Look at that. That is such a great shot. Oh, man. Look at the chain. Again, you can slow this down and watch it back in slow-mo and really soak it in. Yeah, see, I had to turn the portfolio sideways. Oh, his Wolvie is great. <laughs> oh, that's cool, too. Man, Joe's so good. Wait till you see the Stephen Platt art that he has. He has some really, really cool Stephen Platt. I think we... Let me see how much time is left in this video. Ooh, we've got... I don't know. Maybe another five minutes or so. This will be fun. Okay. A lot of times, too, when I shoot these videos... I mean, I, I am working, so it's it's... I can't spend forever shooting videos. I'm not there as a fan. I'm there to actually work and sell stuff. So, so uh, you know, I have to hustle. This is... Um, Splat, Stephen Platt. Um, and again, he's another guy that started not having the stuff inked. I think this that could be an unused piece, but um, you know, the art, and it's funny, he had a drawing on the back of that board, it looked like. That's cool. Sorry. I'm, I'm looking for, like, knockout pages from him. That's funny. That looks like someone else inking him, though. I actually really love when, when Steven Inks himself, I think that the, the early, early, like, Moon Knight, stuff like that, and there is a couple of pieces, look great. So this is Soul Saga, this is Joe Weems Inks. Joe was great on S Steven. I always want to call him Stefan, because it's spelled different. But I'm sure he pronounces it Steven, although I've, I've only met him once twice. Look at that, that is so cool. Alright, sorry, let me get this. I want to get this out of the way. Wait, There it goes. And he was he was incorporating a little bit of the Mobius thing too. It's funny. There was like this one. I think Travis kind of got everyone into it. Honestly, give tra Travis. Travis opened a lot of doors for people, but Travis's little bit of Mobius look sort of spilled over onto Finch and Splat, and everybody kind of got hot on it. I think a lot of people wherever you could see those characters had kind of a Mobius uh, costume design too. I think a lot of people have been fans of it, maybe as kids, but just had never considered bringing it into, like, American comics. That character is so big. Like, look at how huge the muscles are. This is some of his own inks. I was excited to see these, because it's rare that you can find good scans of this stuff online. But I think his inks are just really, really interesting. From what I remember, because I actually visited Extreme with a friend of mine, um, I'm pretty sure he used Microns for the, a lot of that. Maybe some 102, but I'm, I'm nearly sure that some of it was Marker. It's a cool look, man. It's, it's a lot um, harder than it looks. But it always had this like kind of smashed pen look to me. You know what I mean? A little, a little fuzzy. A little like the paper was bleeding. This is more professional, like not well, <laughs> like an inker inking it. Only well, at one point that was for five hundred. There's no way that he's selling it for five hundred now. I think. Oh look at this! This piece is so badass. When I turned, I was just like, oh my god, yes! Look at that. That is nuts. Oh man, that's such a great piece. 
Oh, that's from Soul Saga. Wow. Look at that boot. And the rendering. Man, they killed it on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was so awesome to see that in person, you know? You guys are getting good video footage of it in this video. Oh, this is great, too. This is such an iconic piece. Look at that. Hold on. God dang. Look at the arm on that dude. <coughs> the cape. That's why I stress to people, learn those forms. Do you see the masses of muscle? It's just big, big, chunky shapes that he's lighting. And he... Uh, Splat, really, to his credit, um, his work started to look better and better as he got more into Finch. Like, you could definitely see there was a little bit of a Finch influence on his work. Um, and it really um, made his work even more powerful, you know. Things like Frazetta Spillover. Look at that. I mean, that is such great art. It looks fun to color. Like, I'm not a colorist by any means other than a hobbyist colorist but I could man if you were a colorist and you got a piece like that you'd be like yes <laughs> as an inker too I mean that's like like man when someone gives you a page of pencils that looks like that you're just like oh my god doing the happy dance all right so this is the koi pell stuff this is nice because it's not in a um they're not in plastic sheets Let's see how much time we have left on this video Oh, bummer. Okay. I think what it was is I started another video. Okay, so we're going to end it there for today. Uh, hopefully that was fun for everyone to watch. And uh, stay tuned. I may do another video today. I'm still looking for stuff. But, um, yeah, we'll we'll um, we'll crush it with uh, fun stuff all weekend. And I, I had mentioned on Instagram, I found a bunch of short videos that I shot at the Wildstorm 25th anniversary signing i need to go through them i've never watched them so i don't even know what they are but um I'll, I'll definitely be able to put something together with that so it'll be fun so all right have a great day i may be back later with something else and uh, i'll talk to you in a bit smash the like if you can bye